not just this time of year, but any time of year, when you get somebody on your heart, and you may not think it's somebody on your heart, somebody comes up, maybe somebody you think about all the time, but they just came up again, just give them a call. Just give them a call. Check on them. See how they're doing. Amen? It's a good thing. Because a lot of times all you're there to do is just give them a little encouragement. You know, we can't be other people's faith, but we can encourage other people's faith. Amen? I, I can't go in there and say, this is what you got to believe and this is how you got to believe it. But I can encourage the faith you have. Amen? And, and, and it's important that, that we as Christians, as, as um, part of the body of Christ, you know, we talked a little bit about it last week. It's important for us to minister to one another and to minister the love. You know, say, so, well, they've got the love of God in their heart. Sometimes they need to be reminded. Amen? Sometimes you just need to be, you, you've gotten away just a little bit and you need to be reminded that you have everything in you to get through this. You have more than enough to get, to get up and over this bar. You will make it. Yep. Amen? Amen. And, and it's important that we let people know this, that we encourage them in these things because quitting is the only way we lose. Right. Yeah. So if we can keep someone from quitting... Amen? Amen. If, we, if, if, if you can just say enough to get them to the next person, you know, they, they may be right here, and man, you encourage their faith, and, and they go on down the road, and they're getting a little bit tired, but all of a sudden, they hit someone else, and they encourage their faith, and they go on down the road, and, and they keep being encouraged and built up, and all of a sudden, they think, wait, I'm over this. This is done. Glory to God. This is what we're built to do. We're knit together to do these things. Amen? What a good thing. Glory to God. Look at Nehemiah 8. I don't know that that had anything to do with the lesson, but there you go. Kind of going a little bit different direction anyway, so we'll do it this way. We'll, we'll listen and do it God's way. How about that? I think that would be way better than Dave's way. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, you know, there was a day where Dave's way was, let's just forget it all and go to Taco Bell. <laughs> That'll make us feel better. That ain't the way. Let's find out what God's got going on, and let's follow him all the way. Amen? There's no, there's no time to quit, give up, or, or even think about it. Amen? We, we want to be so full of joy. That when people come around us, they get infected with it. Amen? That, that when people come around us, they, they came and they just weren't quite up. And by the time they left you, they just couldn't believe where they were and where they are now. Yeah. Amen? We, we want to be so full of joy that we couldn't fall. Joy is strength, right? Isn't this what it says in, in Nehemiah 10? It says in Nehemiah 10, then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet. We'll stay out of that. Send the portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. Neither be ye sorry. Neither be ye sorry. Same word for grieved. Don't mourn. Don't be grieved. Don't be sorry. Well, obviously they had heard the word and not heeded what it said before, but today, not only did they hear it, they understood it. And when they understood it, it obviously made them feel bad that they'd missed it. I mean, they, they were grieving for some reason. Maybe they, maybe they were grieving and they couldn't do it. I don't know. But he stopped them and he said, don't be sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. What's he saying? What's going to keep you standing through this and give you the ability to do this word that you just understood is the joy of the Lord. When, when we lose our joy, we become weak. And, and I'm not talking about jumping up and down and spinning. You can do that and that's good too. It's actually in the Bible. There's a word for joy that says jumping, like you're jumping up and around and spinning. But this, this word is like calm delight. I mean, it's like, it's like you're just cheerful and glad. And, you know, and it's in you. It's, it's not just on you, it's in you. 
You know, you're one of those people when things are happening around you, 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 you got, you, I got a feeling. And it's just playing inside you. Everything's going to be all right. And you're walking down there and they say, oh, did you see this? I got a feeling. Everything's going to be all right. And you keep going. That's joy. Why? Because you're unshakable in your faith and your joy is up, upholding it. Amen? You're, you're standing in faith and your joy is your strength. Because when you start losing joy, you know, you ever been down the, driving down the road and you're talking and laughing with your wife and then somebody pulls out in front of you and you were laughing right before they pulled out in front of you. <laughs> and all of a sudden, your countenance changed. It said, what in the world? Exactly. In the world you just went. What would you do? You just got weak. You lost your strength. And you yielded to the world. <laughs> and, you, and you lost your strength right there. You were, you were, you were having joy. You are probably talking about Jesus. <laughs> not me. I'm not, just because I pointed at Kim, don't think it was me. <laughs> but, but that joy is important. It is an ongoing part of our life that, that it's, he says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. In other words... When you're not having that joy, you're not having strength. Amen. <laughs> you, are, you, put, you have put yourself in a position of weakness. Amen. You know, people, people do all kinds of things to try to build up their immunity. Well, the way you build up your immunity to fainting is stay in joy. Right? There, there's two words that go hand in hand, a whole bunch in the Bible, and that's Peace and joy. Peace is stability. Joy is strength. If you're stable and strong, and you stay stable and strong, then what you're in faith to do is going to happen because you won't lose. Why? Because you won't quit. Right? Every time, every, every time the devil throws one other thing, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. And, and, and it's in you. You don't have to sing it out loud. It's going, it's, a, it's like a radio inside you. And it's playing that song. Why? Because you, you know that it's going to turn out all right. Not only is it going to turn out all right, it's going to turn out to your good and God's glory. It's going to come your way and you're going to overcome it. And, and it's when we lose sight of that, which is what the devil wants, that we faint and we go, and we go backwards. Amen? And, and that's why he was, he was telling me, he said, don't be sorry. And then the Levites, the very next verse, they said, don't grieve. Very same word, grieve and sorry, very same word. And the Levites said, they said, don't grieve. This, this is a holy day unto the Lord. What is he this will, this will pull you back and keep you. You know, condemnation is a joy killer. The very word that could save you, the devil wants to condemn you. And, and, and it, it will take your joy. It, you know, you, you've just heard how you could be saved and set free. And the devil says, well, you did this. And you did that. So instead of getting joy, you're crying. And that's what he's telling. He said, don't, don't cry. Get joy. Get joy. This word you heard today is an overcoming good word. You don't, you don't, have, to, you don't have to lose. You don't have to be overcome. You can win. Stay on your joy. And see, that's what we do for each other. When, somebody, when you see somebody that's tired, you know they're tired. They'll tell you they're not. Yeah. Right? And they'll tell you like this, I'm not tired. Yeah. Right? Well, their joy was somewhere around, but not close to them. So what do you do? Oh, you're going to be that way? Okay, forget it. No. No. It's now it's time to start getting in there. You don't have to push. You don't have, you don't have to. You just have to get it. I love you, brother. Man, I know, I know things have been tough, but I know you're going to make it. I, I know the Lord's been helping you. Think about this time and think about that time and bring them back to where they're, where they're hearing about the victories that they've walked in and they're hearing about the victories that are in Christ. And you start bringing them back, whether they're believing for healing, whether they're believing for a financial miracle, whether, whether they're just lacking peace as a whole. You bring them back. You pull them back and you say, oh, no, no, we're not going there. I, I don't care if you don't like me. You're going to like me in just a minute. Why? Because you know they love you. 
and they'll hear from you. Why? That's your brother and your sister. And they need to hear from you right now. They need to know and be reminded of the goodness of God, of the plan of God. He's got a good plan for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. This is the God you're serving. You're not going down, you're coming up. Amen. And, and, and all, all that time, what's happening is, you're, is there's that little radio that they had turned way down is starting to come back up. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. And, amen? And it's, and it's coming up. And, and we're bringing them back. Why? The joy of the Lord, which is their strength, which is what they lost. Their faith was still there, but they had nothing under it. Amen? The faith was still there, but, but they, were, they, were, they were getting weak. They were getting weak. And so it was hard to stand. Why? Because they lost their joy. Amen? Look at Romans 15. Romans 15, 13. This is Paul writing to the Romans. He says, Now the God of hope, the God of anticipation, anticipation with pleasure, confident expectation, the God of confident anticipation, fill you with what? All cheerfulness, calm delight, and oneness, rest, and quietness. In believing. What's he saying? I want to put these things under your faith. He said, I'm, gonna, I, I'm praying that the God of all hope puts these under your faith. Amen? In believing. That you may abound in confident expectation and antip anticipation with pleasure. That you may walk out your door and you know that this is going to happen. And he's saying, I want you to have it through the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't want you to just try and get it. You got it in you. I want it to come up on you. Amen? Amen. And, 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 I, and, and, and that's, that's what we're talking about when we pray one for another. This is Paul asking this for the Romans or for the church at Rome. Maybe for the Romans too. I don't know. Amen? Yeah. And, and these are things that we can have and better yet, we can give. Amen? We can encourage somebody in their faith by, by, by building them up in joy and peace, building them up in strength and stability, giving them a place where they can stand. We receive in a place of joy. Amen? Remember, remember in Matthew, the, the sower sowed the word and one of them received it with joy. Amen. And then he was offended. What, what, you know what offense is? Joy killer. Oh, yeah. That's why we can't, it's not, you can't blame the offender. You have to blame yourself for being offended. Yeah. Right? right? Lots of people want to blame, well, Lord, they, why'd they say that? Doesn't matter why they said that. Doesn't matter why they did that. You have no right to be offended. All it was was the enemy's effort to take your joy away. Because if he could get your joy, he can pull you back. He can keep, he'll, if he'll keep getting your joy, eventually he can get you to quit. And if he can get you to quit, you'll never have what God had for you in the first place. Amen. The next thing you do is blame God. <laughs> Why? Because you got no joy anymore. Amen? But they received it with joy. How'd they receive it? With joy. In other words, with joy, they reached out and grabbed it. With, with a calm delight. They heard the word and they grabbed hold of it. And then a little persecution came. Somebody offended them. And the next thing you know, they're weak. Why? Because they took it. It's going to come. It's, it's going to come. It's up to us to not take it. Amen? It, it, it's up to us to say, no, I, I'm not taking that. I received the word with joy. I'm keeping the word. Because what's he trying to steal? The word. What's it say? The enemy comes immediately to steal the seed sown. The seed was sown with joy. That's how it was received. The enemy, how's he going to get rid of it? Get rid of that joy that got it. We don't want him to get rid of joy. Amen? 
This is, this is the time. We, what are we saying? We sing joy to the world. I mean, man, we, this is joy season. But guess what? For a Christian, every day is joy season. There is no day that you want to wake up and forget that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that He healed you by the stripes on His back, that He covered every, that He eliminated every sin that ever kept you back, and that He's here and is seated with you at the very right hand of God. These are things that should make your day. You wake up in the morning and you don't feel good. You say, wait, whoa, my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If the world exploded today... I'm going to heaven. Nothing bad can happen to me. Amen? And these are things that we need to believe in such a way that our joy stays under it all the time because those should bring joy. It, it, even Jesus said, he said, don't rejoice because you can cast out demons. He said, rejoice because your name's written in the Lamb Book of Life. Amen? And, and these are the things, the things that we should look at when, whenever we're starting to feel weak. You, you could encourage yourself. Remember David at Ziklag, he, he couldn't get anybody to encourage him. They wanted to kill him instead. So he just went and encouraged himself. Right. Why? Well, they were all weeping until they had no more tears. Isn't that what it said? They wept so much that they didn't have any more tears to weep. Mm-hmm. And so obviously that's not the person you go to when you want joy, right? right? If you walk up and you're needing some encouragement and you see somebody bawling, pass by. Why? Because you don't have enough encouragement to give them yet. Get your encouragement, then come back to them and encourage them. Amen? But, but we, can't, we can't be encouraged when we're discouraged. We can't be an encourager when we're discouraged. And, and that's the other thing the enemy doesn't want because it says in the Word, that we should pray for one another. Well, a discouraged person is not going to pray a great prayer. Amen? Because why? They're dealing with their own discouragement. And prayer for someone else is designed to encourage them, to edify them, to build them up, to, to help them, to, to open up doors for God to come into their life and do things that aren't being done right now. Amen? <clears throat> Look at James 1. James 1, verse 2 says, My brother, count it all joy. What? Count it all joy. What's he saying? Stay in joy. Keep your joy no matter what the temptation. Why? Because the joy is what's going to get you through the temptation. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Why? Because the joy is your strength. If, you, if, you, if, the, if every time something happens, you go, ah, oh, There we go again. I can't win for losing. It's going to go bad again today. I don't even know why I got out of bed. (laughs) People do that. It's Monday and it's been Monday all week. Guess what? Monday is one of the seven days that God created and it's going to be a good day every day. What? The, The verse that says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad, which is another form of joy, in it. And it doesn't say except Monday. Right? It, it doesn't say we're going to exclude this day just so you can have a bad day. We want you to have a bad day. Now, the devil would like you to have a bad day. But what the Lord said is, I don't want you to have any bad days. And no matter what is happening, the temptation to lose can be overcome by the joy of the Lord. Amen? The temptation to quit can be overcome if you count it all joy. Amen? And so, so it doesn't matter what comes against you. You know, you don't, you don't get a sniffle and say, oh, I got a cold. You get a sniffle and say, nah. And you go on. Right? You, 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 you don't just say, oh, I must be sick. Oh, uh, I don't have enough money this week. I'm not going to make it. You know, don't plan for failure. You know what? If you ever see that it's looking like you're going to come up short, don't plan for failure. Don't start asking people for money that you don't need yet. Why? Because you're planning for failure. That's free. <laughs> it's taking a temptation is what it is, 
It's the devil trying to get you out of faith. Why? You still had days left. You know God could answer that in a second? The second before you needed it? He could answer that. But you got out of faith three days before the money was due. Amen? <laughs> or you started saying, it's going to be bad two weeks before you went to the doctor. Amen? These, these are not things, these are things that steal your joy, not undergird your joy. Amen? And, and when we allow those things to come upon us, then what, what we have is we're giving in to the temptation rather than counting it all joy in the temptation. And it says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying, what's it, it's a temptation trying your faith. What's it trying to do? It's trying to get you to quit. Because if you quit, your faith didn't work. It's not that faith didn't work, yours didn't because you quit. The only faith that never, never works is the faith that never comes to the end of what it was believing because we quit. Amen? Faith would work. It, it was on its way. It was on its way. And, and we lost our joy. We were tempted. We were tempted. Tempted to be sick. Tempted to be poor. Tempted by, by somebody else. Offended us. They talked bad. They, I can't believe they said that to me. I can't believe they did. Did you know nobody else controls your life but you? Right. Well, you don't know what they did to me. They didn't do anything to you unless they control you. Right? Nobody controls you but you. When you allow somebody, what somebody did to you to decide how you feel and how you react, then now they control you. When you walk in love, no matter what they did, then they don't control you. The Spirit of God controls you. Amen? And that's the most important place we can be. That's why he says over and over, walk in love, walk in faith. What's he saying? He's saying, don't walk this way, walk this way. This way, danger. This way, good. Amen? And when we do that, we stand. We, our, our faith stands. We, we don't get drugged back. We don't become weak. Why? We count it all joy. Why? Because our, our faith is being tested and we're not quitting. What, our faith's being tested? I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. And your faith's being tested? I got a feeling. And if you had it, I got a feeling. I don't care how loud you have to get. You're talking to yourself anyway. Amen? Because what you don't want to see happen is your countenance change. When your countenance changes from joy and peace to fear and concern, you're getting weak. You're getting weak, and you're, going, and you're about to back up and begin to faint. Amen? And, and that's what he's looking for to happen. That's what he wants to happen, the enemy. But the Lord... He'll send people your way just to encourage you. He'll, 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 he'll wake you up with a scripture on your heart. He'll do things. He'll say, turn on faith school tonight. You'll say, no, I just want to watch the news. No, you don't. I will guarantee you the news is not going to bring you joy. I, it's never brought me joy. I'll watch it for just a minute and I'll, I'll, I'll start feeling the, the warmness come up in my ankles. And I'm like, boom, you're off. Why? I don't need that. Amen. I don't need that. Th this, is, this is the answer. Count it all joy. Right. That's a temptation not to count it all joy. Don't take the temptation. Being tempted only makes your faith stronger when you win. It's when you quit that the temptation wins. Amen? Amen. It says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, and let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. What's he saying? He's saying, count it all joy, stand there, and, and, and patience, what's that? Joyful, expectation. joyful, yeah, expectation, joyful, joyful. You're, 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 you're expecting to get it. You, what, if you're patient, if, you, if you're, all these are fruits of the Spirit. You notice that? Love and joy are the first two. And actually it just says fruit of the Spirit. It doesn't say fruits. It says in these, and in, in, in this is the fruit of the Spirit. So the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, 
peace, I can't even, all those good things, meekness, goodness. But you want to say them in a row. Why? Because they're in order for a reason. And, and joy is number two, right under love. You know, a lot of people say it's love and then all those other things fall under it. Well, it does. That's true. But, but the fruit has all those ingredients in it. You know, we, we, we're, you know, if you're like me, you like to pick and choose what you're going to do at the moment. Well, I want to be in faith, not so much on joy right now, <laughs> right? But I'm going to stay in faith. No, you're not. You're going to walk in these fruits, but not these fruits. That's why he said it's fruit. You know, um, the Moors had a, a tree on their place in Florida, and it grew more than one fruit. You guys ever seen something like that? On one tree. Weirdest thing I'd ever seen. You, you guys believe me? It happened. It really did. It grew more than one fruit on one tree. I don't remember how many it was, but that's not right. <laughs> but how many know the fruit of the Spirit grows from one Spirit? Amen? And it comes up in you. And if you operate in this love and this show, and your patience doesn't have anything to work with if there's no love and joy to start with. All these things are connected to one another and they work with one another. You don't separate them out and say, I'm going to love today, but I'm not going to be patient. It's an impossibility. You can't love and not be patient. It's not possible because love is patient. So it's no, there's no way that's going to happen. Nobody's going to say, he's temperate, but man, he goes off the rails all the time. Well, temperate means self-controlled. You can't be self-controlled and go off the rails all the time. You, 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 if you operate in the fruits of the Spirit, you will operate in all the fruits. And when we start picking and choosing, the one doesn't work without the other. Amen? So if you, if you start walking outside of love, you'll never produce joy. Why? Because you've got to produce love first. You've got to produce love first. No? You guys are quiet on me. Of course, you've been quiet, so I won't, I won't count that against you. Just let me get my pen out and mark it, though. I'm taking names right now. Let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. When, when we decide to not let temptation take control, but, but count it all joy, then, then we receive the strength and, and our faith pushes through and we, and we make it. We, we end up perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Why? Because you got what you were believing for. Amen? The temptation didn't take you out. Glory to God. That's good. Man, I like this. I'm enjoying it. You guys enjoying it? Proverbs 24, 24, 9. It says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. And you know, a lot of people get offended. They like, call my strength small. What is, what's he saying? Don't let your strength be small. Don't, you, could, you can just turn it around. If your strength's not small, you won't faint in the day of adversity. What's your strength? The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The, the, the joy of the Lord is your fortified place. It's your defense. That, that's what that word literally means. That, str that word strength means your fortified place, your defense. So why would you want to move from that? That, that's your safe place. You know, everybody wants us to talk about safe places now. We have a safe place. Right? We, have a safe, we have our rock. We have our defense. We have, we have Jesus. We, we have a safe place. Amen. And we have a safe place to offer everybody who needs a safe place. Like if they go to a college and they say, man, my college don't have no safe place. We got a safe place. Oh, yeah. Come see us. We'll show you our safe place. We've got defense and a fortified place that you can be in. And the joy of the Lord keeps you there. Amen? And it's a place from where you can receive from God. Why? Because you're in a secure place. You're in a safe place. You're in a confident place where, where no matter what's coming on the outside of you, it doesn't matter. Why? Because you're in your safe place. 
So the temptation's not going to overcome you. Why? You're in your safe place. You're strong. Amen? When, when we're strong, we are, the, when the day of adversity comes and you're strong, you don't even call it the day of adversity. Why? Because you were strong. Amen? I remember when I was younger, much younger, I, I lifted a lot of weights and got up pretty high at one time. And when I got up to my highest point, I would work out. I would, I would warm up with weights that I used to couldn't lift. Amen? So what was I doing? It wasn't, that was not adversity anymore. Adversity didn't come until you got to your highest weight. But when I got to my highest weight, because I had overcome my lower weight, I could lift my highest weight. Why? Because my strength wasn't small. Amen? Now, I don't even put that on the bar. I don't even put my smallest weight on the bar. But I do lay down on the bench. <laughs> and I lift. Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Look at Nahum, Nahum 1.7, just because I like the verse so much. It says, The Lord is good, a stronghold, a defense, a fortified place, is what that means. Stronghold is the same word for strength. A defense, a fortified place in the day of trouble, and He knows them that trust in Him. In other words, if you're, if you're walking in His strength, if you're keeping your joy, He, he knows it. He sees it. It doesn't mean, it, like if the devil comes to you and says, you're not doing this right. You're, you're missing it every day. But the Lord knows. The Lord knows who trusts Him, who cares. The Lord knows and acknowledges and gives answers to those that trust Him. Amen? Those that trust Him won't walk away. They, they won't quit. They'll stay, why? Because he's their fortified place. They'll say in that strong place, how do they stay there? Joy, it's the joy of the Lord, your strength. Amen? How do you stay in that fortified place? That's, that's how we stay when, when we feel like giving in. That's, we, we go and we get in the word and we get around people that will encourage us. We get around people that will build us up and edify us and, and will talk about the goodness of God. Not, well, sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't, right? He always does. He's a good God. Amen? And my lack of experience should not decide what he does. And it shouldn't be preached like, it, like, it, like it's truth. Amen? There's too much preaching, and, and that steals people's joy. You've got whole, whole congregations full of people that don't even have any joy. Why? Well, they don't know what to believe. Right? Well, 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 how can I even trust God? <laughs> right? How can, I, how can I trust Him? He might help me and He might not. I don't know. He, you can trust God. He will help you. But you got to trust Him. You, you're not, you can't trust Him to see if He'll help you. You trust Him and He will help you. Yes. Amen? The, the important thing is, is that our countenance remains in that joy. We never pull back from what He's made us to be. We never pull back from being who we are. Being who you are is a child of God, a child of the creator of the universe. You, you're, you're going to heaven someday to live with Him. You, who we are cannot escape our heart for very far. You know, in, in Psalm 43, uh, David said, Why are you so downcast, O my soul? Why so disquieted within me? For I will yet praise him. He is the health. My, I think he says my hope. Put it up there. Psalm 43. I don't think I have it in my notes. It's like the last verse in Psalm 43. Come on, you can do it. Love me now. Show me some love. There it is. Man, thanks for the love. It says, why art thou disquieted? Hope in God. What's he doing? He's telling himself. What's he He's encouraging himself. He's telling himself what to do. This is called building your own joy. What's he saying? He's saying, you'll hope in God. Yeah, I don't know if David wrote this psalm or just, I, we'll just say the psalmist. But he said, you'll hope in God. And I'll praise him. What? So you're going to hope in God and I'm going to praise him. He's the health 
of my countenance. In other words, he's what keeps the smile on my face. I'm not counting on what's happening around me. I'm not counting on what they said or they said or what they didn't do or what they didn't do. I'm counting on the health of my countenance. He's the health of my countenance. He's the one that gives me joy. He's the one that builds me up. He's the one that called me son. He's the one that saved me, that washed me, that healed me. He's the one that's going, that, that helped me to be an overcomer in the first place so that I could overcome whatever's tempting me not to come over. He's a good God. And, and, and we can wake up every morning with this joy, with this peace, knowing that you don't have to go off the rails. You are so stable. You are so stable. That's the peace of God. And the joy is your strength. You're strong and you're stable. When you wake up every morning and say, I'm strong and I'm stable. I'm strong and I'm stable. That's why he says, he says when, you, when you ask for wisdom, ask in faith. Because what? He that's, in, that's not in faith is like the waves of the sea, tossed to and fro. What's he saying? You're not stable. Amen? But how'd that whole verse start? That's back to James. Count it all joy. Same chapter. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Because if you count it joy and you don't lose your joy, then your faith will always, your, your faith will stand. It'll be strong and, and, you'll, and it'll be undergirded. And, and when it needs a little kick, you'll, you'll have somebody there to kick you. Right? You need a faith kick. Come on. Anybody ever needed? I needed a lot of faith kicks. I'd, I'd be driving down the road years ago when things weren't, when I had a lot of temptations to fail and I was taking too many of them. And my mom would call. She said, what do you am? I'm driving. Oh, good. Well, you can talk to me while you do that. No, well, mom, I'm busy. I don't really have a time to talk. You got time. Mom, I'm 30. I could make my own choice. No, you got time. You know that parents never quit being parents? No. I figured that out now that I'm 58 and I'm still being a parent. <laughs> I mean, you don't tell them as much, but you get your peace in. <laughs> I'm thankful she was pushy because she took the time and she said, no, nah. she said, I, I know what's happening today and you're, you're going to be okay. You know, I was just reading this and she starts, she'd start in. She, you, you didn't, she was so subtle. She'd have the word of God in you before you knew it. You know, you, you had everything up. No, mom, don't get that in me. I don't want that. And the next thing you know, it's in you. And by the time you're off the phone, you're like, man, she's a good lady. And you didn't even want to talk to her when she started. That's who we are. When, when people would get off the phone with us and say, man, I didn't even want to talk to them, but I've been on the phone with them for an hour and I feel good. Why? Because your hope's back where it needs, or your hope and your, your joy are back where they need to be. And now what was going to be a lost hope is full of joy. And you have an earnest, confident expectation that you're going to receive the end of your faith. And you're not quitting until you do. Why? Because now that joy is underneath you. And you got something to stand on and, and you're walking through it and you're believing God and you got somebody that you know is walking through it with you. They're, they're hooked with you. Glory to God. And we can join faith with one another, but we can't be faith for one another. Amen? But we can be encouragers. We can be joy givers. Amen? You, if you abound in hope, you got so much joy, you can share it with others. Right? If you're abounding in something, you got extra. That's why God wants us to abound. If we got extra, we're going to give some here, we're going to, and then we're going to go get more extra because there's a lot of people that need extra. You know how many people in the world today need extra? People say, well, they shouldn't. They're going to church. You know what? You can go to church and walk out the door, and the devil will try to hit you. Oh, yeah. And, you know, maybe you're better than everybody else in the universe, but sometimes you think about getting down, right? None of you? Okay, well, every now and then in my life, right, yeah. I've got blindsided. And I wonder why that happened. I've been doing so good. I go to church, sit on the front row, listen to Brother Moore. I smile. I mean, 
And God comes along and says, what are you doing? And he'll send somebody to your path. That's not you. Oh, that's not Dave. His countenance is always happy. He's, I know him. He's, he's, count, he's a child of God. Dave, you remember your, your name's written in the Lamb's Book a lot? Oh, yeah. That really doesn't matter what happens. But because it's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, good things are going to happen. Yes. Right, I'm a child of God. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm going to step back up. And, and, you know, we could get, it's one thing to get hit and wobble. It's a whole other thing to fall down and quit. Amen? We, we, we want to, when the temptation comes, be so strong that we don't even notice it. That, that, huh, nah, not even a good try. Well, you got too much joy. You got too much. Your faith is founded, and, 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 it, and it's, it's expecting with that great hope in Jesus Christ that you're going to receive exactly what you started out to believing for. Amen? If we're believing for healing in our body, then the Word of God says He sent His Word and healed us. And, and we have His Word on it. If we believe that Word and we have the joy of the Lord because we saw, we saw the Word. Wait a second, I'm healed. I don't have to be sick no more. I don't have to put up with this. I'm healed. I'm not going to be healed. I'm healed. Amen? And we get a hold of those things. And we don't. And, and, when you, and when you get a hold of them and then you pray and you say, thank you, Lord, and I'm healed. And then you go, oh, oh no, my, my ankle's still sore. That's a temptation to quit. Don't even check your ankle. Unless the minister says check it, don't check it. It doesn't change the Word of God. Don't check your wallet. Don't check your bank account. Don't, don't check. You, <laughs> It's one thing if the temptation comes, but if you bring it on yourself, that's a, that's a sure way to fail. We, we want to grab a hold of the Word, and we want to hold on to it no matter what it says, no matter what's going on. Why? We're in our fortified place. We're in our defense. And we're, it doesn't matter what's going on around us. We're covered by the Word of God. And because of this joy, because of this peace, because of the fruits of the Spirit, we can operate in a life of victory for ourselves and help others to walk in the same victory at the same time. Yeah. Glory to God. Man, He's good. How are we going to close? Thank you, Lord. Colossians 1. Colossians 1, verse 10. I think this is a prayer. Yeah. He prays that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful. What kind of, what, what are you going to be fruitful with? You're going to be fruitful with the fruits of the Spirit. You're, you're going to be fruitful. You're going to produce what's in you. Amen. Everywhere we go, we should produce love. We should produce joy. We should, what, why? It's in us. It's what we should have to give. Amen? And being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Verse 11. Strengthened with all might according to His glorious power unto all patience and long-suffering. Again, more fruits. Patience and long-suffering. With joyfulness. What's he saying? All this works with joyfulness. What, what if you read that whole verse and excluded with joyfulness? That, that joyfulness means the same thing. Calm, delight, cheerfulness, gladness. So with cheerfulness and gladness, be strengthened with all might according to His glorious power and all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance in the, in, of the saints in light. What's he saying? You are a child of God. I want you to walk strong in everything that I've put in you. I want you to be mighty in my power. I want you to walk in my strength. And to do all this, you need to be, you need to be patient. You, you notice patience is all over with this peace and joy. What's he saying? He's saying, if you're not patient, you'll quit. 
I need you to know you're going to have to use patience. He, not, he didn't say you're going to need patience. He said you're going to have to use it. Why? You have it. It's in you through the Holy Spirit. It's love. He, and, you know, later he did say you have need of patience. Why? Having done all. You, know, have, you, need, you, need, have, you need to have patience that when you've done the will of God, you'll receive. Amen? In Hebrews he says that. Glory to God. But, but what he's saying is, I want you to be strengthened with all might. I want, you to have, I want you to have full patience. I want you to be long-suffering. In other words, you can't get mad easy. You can't get offended easy. You can't take every temptation that comes in front of you. You have to, with joy, stand the test and realize that your faith is in question right now. And if your faith is in question, all you have to do is stand. And your faith will come out perfect and entire wanting nothing. Glory to God. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Lord. I think what I, what I see more in all this than anything is our ability to minister to one another and to minister to people. You know, people can act like I, I'm never going to get hurt. I'm, it's never going to bother me. But, you know, I work in a church, so I can tell you that's just not true. And, and you don't want to get hurt and you don't want to be bothered, but you want to know that you don't have to be. And you need to know that there's people around you that do care and, and they want to build you up and, and bring you up to another place and keep you where you were so that you don't fall in the day of temptation. So you, you don't quit when the enemy comes against you and you do stand and you receive your healing, you receive your family whole, you receive your provision, you receive the things that God has for us. And, and there's people, I know everybody in here has that heart for one another. Everybody in Sarasota has that heart for one another and that heart for each other. I guarantee you, if the two churches were mixed today, you wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. Why? We've all been eating the same thing. Right? We've all been feeding on the same thing. The, the goodness of God, the love of God, the, 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 the power of God. We've been feeding on the things that get you over, that help you overcome. And we can help each other not to quit. That you are an overcomer. You will make it. There's, you're not quitting. I mean, I've literally told people, anybody ever told somebody that? No, you're not. They said, well, I'm quitting. No, you're not. Well, you, you can't tell me I'm not quitting. Yeah, I can. You're not quitting. Why? Sometimes you got to be you got to help. And sometimes it takes a little more work to help than others. But we got to be willing to do it. Even on the day you don't feel like doing it. That's the day you need to do it the most. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. He's helping us. This, this season, we're going to walk through this with joy. When people see you, they're going to see the goodness of God. They're going to see the countenance of God on your face. They're going to see the good things that God has going. You're going to go to places where people maybe know him, but don't know him. You're going to be going to family that have been fighting and fussing. And, you know, I, I hear about family and, and I thank God that my family's not this way, but you got families that don't talk to each other. And you guys probably know people that do that. Well, there's no reason for that. In you is everything it would take to heal that situation. Amen? Just got to follow God. Doesn't mean you go push your way, but you listen to God and you ask for help. But there's going to be all kinds of opportunities and temptations to fail in this season and the next. But we don't have to. We'll count it all joy. We'll count it all joy knowing that the trying of our faith works patience. And we'll endure what are you enduring? Temptation. You kill your, your, how are you enduring it? With joy. Amen? How many know that with joy means you probably got to have one of these? Right? Doesn't mean you got to be stupid. Right? A real smile. You know, when somebody says you're happy, you know, I'm happy. Right? Or you're singing, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has. Right? Real joy. Real joy, real peace, real stability, real strength. We can have it. We do have it. And we can minister to one another with it.